Auto layout allows you to create dynamic frames that respond to their contents. You can use auto layout frames to create designs that grow or shrink as you change the objects within them. In this video, we'll use auto layout to create fluid cards for a featured movie section in a theater app. Want to follow along or view the finished product? Click the link in the description to get a copy of the file. To begin, we'll create the most simple example of an auto layout frame, one with only a single layer inside. In this case, we'll make a button to display the show times for a movie. Let's create a text layer and enter the first screening time. To add auto layout to the button, we'll select it and use the keyboard shortcut Shift A. Figma will place the text layer inside a new frame with auto layout added. When adding auto layout to a single layer, Figma will apply vertical and horizontal padding around the inside edge of the frame to give child layers some breathing room. If you select multiple layers, the padding value will initially be set to zero. If we change the text in our button to a different screening time, the button will dynamically resize. This accommodates the width of the text layer while preserving the 10 point padding on both the left and right side. Let's rename this to button before moving on. We can also adjust properties of the frame, including fill, stroke, effects, and corner radius. Let's soften this button by rounding the corners of the frame by eight points. We'll also change the fill property to a dark gray and the text to a white color to better fit our dark app design. Auto layout frames can also contain other auto layout frames nested within them. This allows us to create complex but powerful designs. To add auto layout to the button, we'll select it and use the keyboard shortcut Shift A. Our button is now an auto layout child frame within a new auto layout parent frame. If we select the button and duplicate it using the shortcut Command D, a copy will be added to the right of the original inside the auto layout parent frame. We can see that the auto layout parent frame has grown horizontally as new child objects were introduced. This matches the auto layout direction property, which is currently set to horizontal. We can always change the direction in the properties panel. For our button row, we'll keep this as horizontal. Next, we'll adjust the empty white space between the buttons. Let's adjust this to eight points. This button row will become part of another auto layout frame, so we don't need any horizontal padding on it. We'll update it to zero. Now we'll update each of the buttons with unique screening times. Then rename the auto layout parent frame to button row. We can change the order of the children in an auto layout frame. Select the child and press an arrow key to move its position in that direction. We can also use the arrow buttons at the top of the properties panel or click and drag the object to swap its position. When we reorder an object's position on the canvas, its position in the layers panel will also change. Next, we'll add two new text layers, one for the movie description and another that's larger for the movie title. We'll position these two text layers above our row of buttons, apply a light gray fill, and rename them in the layers panel. Then we'll click and drag to select these objects and add auto layout using Shift A. A few things just happened. All three objects were placed inside of a new auto layout frame. Those objects were distributed equally and the distance between them was assigned to the space between property. The direction of the auto layout frame was also set to vertical due to our layers being stacked vertically before we added auto layout. Each of these layers are left aligned. We can use the arrow keys to align objects to the left, center, or right within an auto layout frame. We'll leave them left aligned for now. Let's tighten this up a titch by setting the space between to eight points and renaming it to Featured Movie Card. As we enter a longer description in the text field, the text won't wrap to a new line. Instead, the auto layout parent frame grows to accommodate the longer text. This is a result of the resizing property of the text layer, which is currently set to grow horizontally. We want our text to wrap to the next line, so we'll change the text resizing property to grow vertically. We'll also specify a fixed width of 220 for the text layer. When our description exceeds 220 points in width, the text will wrap to a new line. Other objects in the auto layout frame will respond by pushing the button row down and growing the height of the auto layout parent frame. 
it's also possible to add a new layer or object to an auto layout frame. We're missing an image from our movie poster, so let's use the rectangle tool to draw a rectangle shape. We'll adjust the width to 222 and the height to 328. We'll also change the fill color to a darker gray, round the corners, and rename it to movie poster. To add this rectangle into our auto layout frame, we'll click and drag it over the frame. A rectangle is wider than the frame we want to add it to, so Figma won't nest it. We'll override this nesting behavior by holding down the command modifier key. Within an auto layout frame, a blue line will indicate where the object will be placed. When we release the click, the rectangle will be placed inside of the frame and the rest of the content will move to accommodate it. Now that we have every layer in our card in place, we can add 16 points of vertical and horizontal padding to give our layers some extra space. We want our card to always be 254 points wide. The frame should only grow vertically as we add longer descriptions. To prevent the frame from growing wider, we can change the resizing behavior to fixed width. Our movie card design is complete. Let's turn it into a component to use in our designs. Since components are frames, auto layout can also be added to them. With our movie card turned into a component, we can create an instance of it and then duplicate it several more times. Then we can select all of the instances and add auto layout to make a row of movie cards. We'll also set space between to zero. We want a user to be able to scroll horizontally through the list of movies in our prototype. But it's not possible to add scrolling overflow to an auto layout frame. This is because scrolling overflow requires the content within a frame to extend outside of that frame's bounds. The best way to add scrolling to this is to select the auto layout frame, place it inside of a new regular frame using the shortcut Command Option G, and resize the regular frame. We'll set the width of our frame to 375 points. Now from the prototype tab, we can set the scrolling behavior to horizontal. Let's rename this to Featured Movie List and incorporate it into our app design. The only thing left to do is to add the actual content into our designs. I'm going to use a plugin called Google Sheets Sync to quickly populate the design with image and text data I have saved in a Google spreadsheet. Check the video description for more information on how to install and use Google Sheets Sync and to get a copy of the spreadsheet. Auto layout allows you to create dynamic frames that respond to their contents. Check the links in the video description to learn more about auto layout. Thanks for watching.